Hello, my name is Andrew Corbett, the developer of the mine simulator for the mining industry. This is the second video in a series of videos about TMS. In this video, I'm going to present the mine simulator's input output spreadsheet as well as the mine simulator simulation engine which has been developed in Arena. This video will be a high level view of both the input output spreadsheet and the simulation engine. Other videos in this series will detail more individual sections of the TMS input output spreadsheet as well as to demonstrate how the TMS simulation engine works, its animation and its display screens. Okay, TMS. As I said before, TMS, you put all your inputs into an Excel spreadsheet, which all mining engineers know how to operate. Uh, and it guides you through what you've got to put in there anyway. But so you specify in this spreadsheet whether you're simulating a mine or a rail, or a mine and a rail, or a mine and a port, or a port, just only a port or whatever it is. And you specify all the things about that particular operation. So in a mining operation, you define the, the whole road network. Um, you define which fleet of trucks you're using, and maybe uh, how you want to operate that fleet of trucks, you know, how you define your shift changes, your crib breaks, you define the weather, you define your seasons, you define you know, all these other things which about your operation as such. And TMS, which is developed in Arena, reads that virtually that information and then simulates what is in that spreadsheet. I use Arena uh, for several reasons. Um, it's quite a good system. The industry has accepted it. The mining industry has accepted Arena as a good simulation tool. There are others out there. But the advantage I like about Arena is that um, you can take, I've taken it, I can use the high level constructs they've developed, or I can go down to virtually a pro programming language, which I've done, to develop my own constructs. So Arena was mainly designed around the manufacturing industry. It's called discrete dynamic simulation. The discrete part is it's designed about making fridges or cars or you know the general manufacturing industry. You know, in the mine industry we have discrete elements like trucks and loaders and ships and whatever trains but we also do bulk materials handling, a lot of bulk materials handling. So <coughs> I've been able to build constructs in Arena such that it handles bulk materials handling. So for example a conveyor TMS knows that when you, the rate of material you are loading and putting onto a conveyor, so it knows the client gets physical profile, but it also knows up to 20 grade attributes about that material going to this, onto that conveyor, you know, gold grade or silica grade or recovery or whatever it may be, yield. And as the material, you may start putting material onto that conveyor at 25,000 tonnes per hour, but because somewhere else in your process it's slowed down, you may slowly go from 25 tonnes per hour as time goes by to 900 tonnes per hour. So the profile on the conveyor will just slowly change and the grade of the material in there may change. And so ARENA, or TMS, so it knows along the whole length of your conveyor what the continuous change in, in material profile or rate and also attributes of the material on the conveyor. So then when it comes off the conveyor, TMS knows that it's coming off at a certain rate and these are the attributes of the material coming off. So it can you know, handle or track grade and tons right through the whole system quite um, precisely. It also tracks material attributes through run of mine stockpiles through, you know, when you, you dump one load into your truck dump and then another load follows it, it knows how that material is blending within the truck dump and then how it's being presented to you. Yeah, your coal washery plant or whatever it is. So it has that sort of detail. And that's been enabled because Arena enables me to go down to virtually a programming language to put that sort of detail, to build those sort of constructs to enable TMS to do the detailed information. So when you run TMS, it produces a whole pile of spreadsheets, or I'm sorry, outputs, which you then load back into the same spreadsheet you use to have the inputs. So you have one, for one particular run of Arena, you have one spreadsheet that has the inputs and the outputs. So if you, for say simple, something simple, you run a mine which has 10 trucks. Um, so you run it, 10 trucks, 
and then you have one spreadsheet with the inputs and outputs for running a simulation for 10 trucks. So then you take a copy of this spreadsheet and you add another truck in there. So it's got 11 trucks. So then you run it through Arena and it comes back and loads all the outputs into that. So you have you end up two spreadsheets, one with 10 trucks, one with 11 trucks. So you can repeat, repeat that until you get I don't know, 15, 20 trucks or something. So then you have a whole series of spreadsheets. So then you can go into these spreadsheets with another spreadsheet and interrogate those spreadsheets. So you can do your little, you can do your charts of production versus size of the truck fleet. But you can also, because the simulation has all these outputs, you can look at, you know, as we increase the truck fleet, how does, you know, we increase the time trucks are waiting at the diggers or increase the time trucks are waiting at the dump or this is when you start to do the analysis. As you increase the truck fleet, what is happening in your process? So then you can say, if we're increasing our time at the truck dump, maybe we look at how we run our run or mine operation. Now, how many, how we time, we do we queue trucks up at the truck dump, as opposed to then, you know, sending a truck to the run or mine, and then how do we reclaim off the run or mine stockpiles and change how you actually do that to say, <coughs> well, we've got more trucks in the system. We're losing so many hours because they're just queuing at the dump. Let's change our run of mine stacking and reclaim uh, processes and see if we can get more tons through the system by doing that. So this is how you do some very simple you know, process analysis work with Arena uh, TMS. And also, as I probably mentioned for each of the trucks, diggers, LHDs, all have a specification file for that particular type of equipment so these are all so in the, the spreadsheet like trucks you can it just pulls you just click on and it pulls down a menu and it shows you all your different types of trucks or all the different types of specification files you have for trucks and then you can just select whichever trucks you want so you can have mixed fleets and all this sort of stuff in the in the spreadsheet so that's generally how tms works um reasonably simple but does a lot of stuff <coughs> so this is um just some shots of the TMS input spreadsheet. So this is the main menu, virtually. So it's just, you just click on these different options to go to other sub menus and or other data things that enables you to specify different things. So the general one is just exactly that, simulation description. You just, you can put in, if you want to, a description. You know, this is a simulation with X number of trucks and do, 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 do whatever it may be, just as a <coughs> you know, description of the simulation. And you also specify you know, how long you're running it for. You're running it for a year or six months, and also how many iterations. So you're running it for a year, and you're running it 40 times. So you're running the same year 40 times, and you, the reporting will report on you know, each iteration, how things have changed in that iteration. Uh, general parameters, these are just things like, you, know, you, can, you may have a simulation of a mine and a port, you can here you could just say turn off the port i just want to simulate the mine in which case you know the simulation runs a little bit faster because it's not doing the port and because you don't want the constraints of the port impacting on your mine you want to see what the mine can actually do without the port being a constraint so these are what those sorts of things are and reporting um, there's a whole pile of standard reports in tms here you can specify which reports you want to be turned on and you can also specify if you want to report on just a particular type of equipment, like you want a whole cycle report just on this particular truck, or you can specify uh, the timing of the reporting. Like there's an operational log that tells you have tons gone in and out of each piece of fixed plant, each conveyor, each stockpile, etc. And you can report on that, say, every hour, or you can report on that every minute if you want, or you can just report on that every 12 hours, the end of every shift, or something like that. Uh, distributions are there just things that in the simulation you can specify things as you know constants or you can specify them as distributions so the simulation will not have a uh, things will vary and that's how you do a distribution um, you can link TMS to other versions of TMS running on the same network we'll, I'll come back to this later on and these are the status codes these are things you set up saying you know, this is status codes when a truck is loading, when a truck is dumping, when it's waiting for a loader, when it's uh, being delayed on the haul cycle or whatever it may be. They, you just set up the status codes. Um, this is the operational data, mainly 
uh, applied to mining operations. Um, the mine blocks is exactly that, the mine plan, the all body model, how you want to mine the blocks. If you don't tell the simulation anything else, it will just sequentially mine through those mine blocks, um, you know, applying mining campaigns or whatever else. But you then but there's other things you can do to control how the simulation mines through those mine blocks. So it may skip mine blocks and go on to other ones because of whatever reason. Uh, you can set up mine block dependencies. Um, they're mainly to do with, um, you know, you can't mine this block until this other block is mined because it's behind it. Or, you know, you got to mine this waste on top of the ore first and stuff like that. Uh, you can set up you know, just your material types, what you want to call them, um, just names to give to different material types. Uh, you can set up blending of materials. Um, that's, uh, in the coal industry, maybe you want to blend different types of ash. Is uh, okay to develop to blend this type of ash and this type of ash on this stockpile because you know that's a different product which we sell. Uh, you can set up your seasons. These are things like your wet season, dry season, summer, winter, or whatever. Um, because some things happen differently in the winter months, especially like in Canada or something like that compared to the summer months. Um, even like mines, bauxite mine, in the winter, um, summer months when they get a lot more rain, they have a lot more delays of trucks getting bogged or whatever it may be. So these are seasonal things which other parts in the simulation you can define. Um, you can define shift and shift events. These are things like how you're going to do shift change, uh, crib breaks, um, fatigue breaks sometimes, and things like that. And you know, you specify things like, well, at the start of day shift, when the guy goes out, he does a walk around his truck for five minutes before he takes off. Those sorts of events. These are the kind of the regular events that happen with every shift. Um, you can set up shift rosters. Um, some mines have a different roster here to this, you know, they may run two 12-hour shifts on this part of the operation, but, you know, uh, two eight-hour shifts on this operation and not, not at the weekend or something. So they get different rosters and can apply to different parts of the operation. Um, operators and crews, actually, you just define operators, you know, Joe Smith, and he has certain skills, you know, he, he's a really good haul truck operator, but he's a lousy... Um, digger operator so you can put in these skill levels and look at you know if we just have the really good truck operators operating and the, the really good loader operators or we you know mix it about what impact that has on your operation um, operator numbers that's purely saying these are the maximum number of truck operators we've got or something and then in certain you know you have a whole fleet of trucks but only a certain percentage of them are operating at one time but there may be instances where you know, you have more than the normal. But if you haven't got the operators to operate, those trucks are just going to be stood down for the shift uh, in those rare instances. <coughs> you can set up absent operators. These are when the number of percentage is shifting, you might have 0.05% of shifts where you're, you're down to operators. Um, some mines are like that. Um, and so you, you got two trucks stood down for a whole shift. Um, tip points, they're just places where trucks can tip their load. Um, so some mines that have one tip point, um, say in the crusher, in other mines you may have four tip points into the same crusher. This is where you define how many tip points you have, how many tip points you may have on a waste dump. There may be one, or you may have three. Um, decision points. These are points where the truck will get to, and then the operator makes a decision. He may The decision may be, do I go up to the truck dump? Or do I go to the run of mine? And the decision may be, I can see up there, there's already two trucks queued. Therefore, um, the decision I'm going to make is go to the, the run of mine and dump there and then go back to the loader, loading unit. So they're called decision points. And there's, lot, there's a bit of functionality you can apply to how those this, the truck operator makes those sorts of decisions. Uh, truck queuing options. These are things to do with, you know, you have a truck dump and normally you have two trucks queued. So if another truck turns up, sees this two, he goes to the run of mine and dumps his load. But depending on if you're running run of mine reclaim at the time, you may decide to increase that queue by four. So you don't want trucks going, dumping at the run of mine, then going back to the mine, and then other trucks loading at the run of mine and going up to the bridge. You may stop dumping at the run of mine or increase the queue of trucks allowable at the dump bridge. And you can play around with all these sorts of things. And this is how... You can do analysis of 
different operating procedures you want to set up, especially around truck dumps and stuff like that. Operator swap locations, that's some mines have just put up a little bit of a uh, gantry type thing on the side of the road. The truck pulls up and the gantry is the same height as the, the cab and they just step out of the cab and the new operator hops in. So you can look at setting how many you want and where you want to put these around the mine. Uh, go park maintenance locations, that's purely where your go park is, how many trucks can park there, whether you're allowed to park up uh, loaded trucks, some mines don't allow it because of the issues with the tyres and loaded trucks, the safety issues. Um, yeah, where you do, how many maintenance bays you have, you know, for, for refuelling, where your wash, day, wash bay bays are, how many do you have. Also your workshop, how many workshop bays you have, how many bays you have for trucks, how many trucks is it for load if you have front end loaders, um, how many bays do you have for uh, auxiliary equipment, all that sort of stuff. So this all impacts on the operation. You know, if you've got five trucks being you know, maintained, breakdowns maintained uh, for whatever reason, plan maintenance, you know, and a truck wants to go in for plan maintenance, he's due for it, he just has to stay out in the circuit. And the simulation generates an exception. It allows the truck to stay out the circuit, but it generates an exception and you report some of that. You know, if you get too many of these exceptions, maybe you should start looking at, maybe you should have a, an extra maintenance bay in this particular operation. Um, mining campaigns, you can set up mining different material types. You can say, I'm gonna mine this type A, material type A for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and material type B on Thursday, Friday, and material type C on the weekend or something. Well, you may say, I'm going to mine material, I'm going to mine 100,000 tonnes of material A and then 200,000 tonnes of material B and just go backwards and forwards. Or you can set it up that, you know, when the product stockpile containing this type of material gets below a certain level, I'm going to trigger a mining campaign. I'm going to move my loaders, you know, especially operations that front end loaders type units so they can move them around. And, you know, we're going to move into this particular material so we can top up our product stockpiles before the next ship arrives. That's going to take that material away. Uh, the simulation monitors uh, broken rock. Um, so it can kind of generate when it's going to have, need to do blasting. And there's a whole pile of parameters in there, like the area of influence around the blast. So the simulation actually blocks off haul roads using that area of influence and puts barricades across the road so trucks can come up there and they just park and wait for the end of to the blast to be finished. You know, it moves a shovel away from the blast face, all those sorts of times. It has uh, information about um, re-blasting, if you want to call it that. I've forgotten the terminology off the top of my head. Um, you know, so some blasts go through and they get cleared and everything's back into production. Others say, no, we're going to have to re redo this blast or what have you. So there's a lot of information on blasting there. And so it tracks, so you get the influence of blasting on your operations. Meetings are meetings outside the normal shift shift events. These are kind of, you know, safety meetings. You may have a two hour safety meeting once a month or some other whatever meetings. Um, mine delays are things like, just delay the mine like excessive dust, um, you know, excessive rain or whatever it may be, but it's kind of, just shuts the mine down for a short period for whatever reason. Then you have mine shutdowns. These are more things like cyclones or um, yeah, major storms or they could be industrial action or something that shuts down the mine. Uh, speed restriction events. These are things like in some mines in the wet season, they slow the trucks down to 40 kilometers per hour to preserve the whole road payment during the really wet season to stop potholes or something like that. Uh, and you can play around with that. Uh, mining rate restrictions. Some mines <coughs> you want to, you may have a shovel in a certain area in a certain period you want to actually restrict its rate because you don't want to get ahead for whatever reason and you want another shovel to be working at a higher rate. So the simulation will then manipulate how it dispatches trucks, trying to keep the rate of those shovels at whatever you set them at or, or restrict it at. Um, and then you can specify day, night, temperature information. Um, well, it's a lot of these things you don't have to do if you want to, the functionality is there. Day and night is usually some ports only operate during daylight hours. Um, temperature, you can specify temperature on an hourly basis throughout the year or something if you want. And that is used in TKPH calculation and stuff. And you can specify rain events. 
storms and all these sort of things that may impact on your operation. Now the whole is network for the trucks. So you, in the simulation you, you specify a three dimensional haul road network. It's not just it's the roads between the the loader unit and the dumps, waste dumps or the crushes or whatever run a one stop pile, but it's also all the roads to the the workshops, the service bays, uh, the water truck fill points and all this sort of stuff, those whole roads as well. And they are just generally uh, specified as strings of points. And you just feed that specify here and then there's an option here, the simulation or this spreadsheet will then manipulate, interrogate that information and generate a whole road network for that information, looking for intersections and all this sort of stuff. And and then it, it puts it in, develops what called haulage, haulage nodes. And these are all the different points along your haulage network and the haulage segments. So that's kind of a straight line segment between haulage nodes. So these haulage, these haulage segments, they could be a kilometre long. If it's just a straight section of haul road that's a kilometre long, which is just flat or it doesn't change. Or they could be you know, 10 metres apart on a, a corner if you want that sort of detail. Usually... The haulage segments represent, you know, or the nodes represent a change in gradient or a change in direction of the haul road. But each haulage segment, you can define all sorts of attributes, whether it's one way, two way, and um, the rolling resistance and speed restrictions, if you want, and all these other sorts of things in each node. Same with haulage nodes, you can specify a number of things about haulage nodes. You can specify, like, this is where passing bay is on on this particular node in an underground mine or something. Haulage strings is just taking the data the simulation has manipulated into a 3D haulage network and putting a haulage string so then you can put that into some other package if you want to look at what it is. Um, corner speed restrictions, this is where if you want you can restrict you know, the speed of empty or loaded trucks and specify differently for each type. Um, for different severity of corner so the worst case is like a corner which is 180 degrees i.e. switchback type thing where the truck may have to slow down to you know 10 kilometers or 5 kilometers per hour to get around it um, and it, but you can also specify it for other all the different degrees of severity of a corner um, noting that you know some T intersections you can erect stop signs or give way signs and stuff and the trucks will honor those sorts of um, directional uh, traffic directions and stuff like that. Um, all these network options, this is just where you can specify a whole pile of things to interrogate the Hawley's network before you use it in the simulation. It'll actually find issues with the Hawley's network that you know, you, s you, know, you can't get from one point to another point in the Hawley's network because it uh, just hasn't found the intersection somewhere or something. Uh, this is just a bit of option that you can you may have the haulage network but you may want to specify like another truck dump or another waste dump somewhere so you just put in the, the coordinates of the waste dump and then you can use this option here to say well this is a new point build another road between the closest haul road node in your network and this one and it just generates another haul road segment to get access to that waste dump this is just a simple thing to calculate distance between haul road nodes for some reason. You often, you know, just sometimes you want to just interrogate it. Some mines have can specify the haulage network in the eastings and northings, but they don't have elevations. So this just enables you to add elevations using LIDAR data or whatever other information you have about elevation. So you can get the three move a <coughs> two dimensional haul road into a three dimensional haul road network, which the simulation prefers. And this is just the whole trace, whole cycle trace you can set up. I want to trace between this whole road node and this. Every time a truck travels from this point to this point, I want to do a, a trace of it, um, telling me what the truck the truck's doing, how what speed it's doing, and its forces on it, and all this the rimple forces and retard forces and all that sort of stuff. Hey, so I can check. Then you come into mobile equipment, so you can specify trucks, water carts shovels, diggers, uh, graders, etc. Um, you can specify some general information about mobile equipment. This is just general information about 
separation maybe some part of it's like separation you can set, specify separation of equipment based on you know when they're over, going over a certain speed the se minimum separation is this when they're going under this speed the minimum separation is a certain distance or something like that uh, you can specify the road rules you know give way to the left give way to the right you know um, empty trucks give way to loaded trucks or whatever you want to however you want to do um, you can allocate different types of material to uh, different types of equipment to specific material types if you want um, you know uh, you can do group assignments operational fleet size that's just how big some fleets are support equipment that's all you know things uh, you may use that other users of the whole road um, more it comes more into play with um, underground mines <coughs> where you have blasting trucks or whatever it is going up and down the, the decline um, you specify haul trucks so once again you just go in there and you can press down a pull down menu and specify what truck you want and you can specify <coughs> you can just have just that or you can do all sorts of specifications about where it where it gets maintained does it when it does its servicing does it go to a service point or do you use a service truck or um, out in the mine um, <coughs> you know, how you know you're going can this year truck be used for only doing rejects from a coal prep plant or does this truck be used for, can be used for run and mine reclaim or not and all this sorts of stuff so you, you, know, you say well, this truck only can be used in waste not ore and all this sort of stuff and <coughs> you specify truck brakes and uh, these are usually due to fatigue um, some mines have fatigue brakes then you can set up operational delays and standby delays these are the simulation generates a lot of operational standby delays automatically because it can uh, these are ones that generally that are man-made that the simulation just doesn't know about and they're quite specific to the specific operation um, you can specify haul truck carry back so the, uh, in like some mines in the wet season or whatever the, the carry back just sticks there and just kind of slowly builds up and once it gets to a certain level the truck is sent to a wash bay and the tray is washed out and off it goes again uh, you can specify your water trucks um, how big the tanks are what type of trucks they are and stuff and also how you dispatch water trucks um, the simulation takes in things like rain and stuff so it won't dispatch a water truck during the rain or whatever but um, during the when it's not raining you can specify how you want to dispatch water water carts um, similarly you can find what shovels or diggers or front end loaders you have in your simulation and once again you can assign all the attributes about yeah you know, like as a shovel therefore when we're doing plan maintenance we move it to a specific area to to do that plan maintenance um front end loaders you may say well you know we do maintenance out in the mine or do we bring it back to the workshops and stuff like that load haul dumps and scoops depending on where you come from you know just for underground mines same sort of thing the specifications on them and once again for your diggers or your load haul dumps you specify your operational standby delays these are the ones the simulation once again cannot generate automatically um, you can set up your load and truck capa capabilities now, some shovels just won't aren't used to load smaller trucks or whatever it may be um, so you can do truck ca capability or restrictions so things don't happen uh, payloads and load times you can put uh, apply uh, variations if you want some mines even though the simulation can't generates load times as I can't discuss before some mines say well, what is the impact if we can reduce the load time by 10% so in here you can specify load times uh, in a factor of say 0.9 or something so it reduces the load time and see what impact that has on the operation this is where you can specify bucket fill factor depending on face height some mines like bauxite mines where the mining you know, thin layers of material you know the fill factor falls down when uh, the face height gets below you know two meters or something whatever it may be depending on the loading unit um, uh, you can have set up fleets of equipment and you can set up how many op diggers you may have a larger fleet of diggers than you require so you can set up you know I've got five diggers but 
I really only have four operational at any one time. So if there's five available, one of them will be stood down, those sorts of things. Uh, you specify what type of graders you have, and also how the actual graders operate, you know, when, you know, mainly to do with whole road maintenance, whether the graders just operate independently, or you may have three graders that actually work together grading the road, so they grade a section a bit quicker. And also you specify how you dispatch grader. Um, the simulation monitors haul road usage by the weight of the trucks travelling on the haul road and then you can actually dispatch graders based on you know, the usage of the haul road. You can specify doses, uh, mainly for when you use them to reclaim stockpiles or something, you know, push the material into a truck dump or into a uh, conveyor, onto a conveyor or something, whatever it may be. The simulation monitors the, the rate, the capable rate of the dozer. So when it, when it doesn't have to be pushing in, the dozer will, will actually prepare the stockpile. So it's like when he does need to push in, he can push in at a much higher rate initially. And as if he has to continually push in, the simulation monitors the uh, tramming distance virtually. And so the rate the dozer actually does, if he's continually working, will actually fall down to he gets down to a sort of a minimum rate that he can maintain. And then when he stops pushing into whatever he's pushing in, and then he'll start to go into a mode of preparing a stockpile. So then next time he runs, he, he can run at a higher rate for a while. So the simulation carries all that sort of stuff, or calculates all that sort of stuff. You can put in equipment floats to move your shovels around. So the shovels all have a weight, and the diggers have a weight. And then the, these have specifications about what weight they can carry. And so how long it takes to load a shovel on there and you know all the rest of it so you can have the impact of these guys on the operation drag lines uh, pretty simple they just mine like drag lines do you specify mine blocks that are going to be moved by the drag lines which may be exposed coal or whatever it is you can specify tow trucks and there's some mines use tow you know they tow broken down haul trucks back to the workshops and you can specify digger moves. These are for operations where you know, they're probably using front end loaders or something, and they you want to move the digger. Uh, you know, the material on the product stockpile is getting the grade is getting too low, so you want to move a digger into a high grade material to bring the product stockpile back onto as close as you can to spec, because you know you're trying to get uh, specifications on your ships as close as you can, or reduce the variability of them anyway. Then there's all the fixed plant. Um, fixed plant, you can see we specify, <laughs> specify plant maintenance schedules. So this can be you know, number of hours, how, how often you take plant down for the plant maintenance. And you can also specify breakdown profiles, time between and time to repair profiles. And then each of these you can apply to individual pieces of fixed plant or groups of fixed plants. So you may have a plan maintenance schedule that plan maintenance schedule one you apply to some a certain number of these conveyors, and then plan maintenance schedule two you apply to a, another set of conveyors. So you have one side of your plant working when you at all times, or depending on the similar uh, the configuration of the the operation. Yes, set up fixed plant locations. These are just the actual physical location of the plant. Uh, so for conveyors, you, you specify the XYZ or easting northing elevation of the one end of the conveyor and the other end of the conveyor. So then the simulation knows how long the conveyor is and he knows what the speed of the conveyor is, so he knows how long the material is on the conveyor. But, and it also shows up on uh, the graphic side when you run TMS in Arena. Uh, you can set up fixed plant relationships. That means there's a whole pile of different things you can do saying, you know, <coughs> we only run this conveyor when this other conveyor is running. We only do this. We set the flop gate to direct to this stockpile when this is happening and all this sort of stuff. So it's just relationships between fixed plant. Um, truck dumps. So this is just where trucks dump. So you specify the size of the, the bin they truck dump in you specify how you want to run your lights so you know the green red light if you ever use them on your truck dump um, how you know you may have a front end loader also operating there taking material off a stockpile close by stockpile and putting the truck dump and 
you know, you may have a crude oil dump been feeding into the truck dump bin through a window on the side of the truck dump, all these sorts of things. And you can specify, you know, the feeder rate and all that sort of stuff. You also specify crushes. In this respect, um, the, if you do have the material, uh, the information, you can specify the hardness of the material you're mining at the mine face. And when it hits the crusher by the truck dump, the actual speed or the rate for the crusher can vary based on the hardness of the material it's actually processing at that particular time. So the rate for the crusher will vary over time. And that's just using, I think it's Boyd's third law of crushing or whatever it is to implement that. Um, waste dumps and waste dump fill sequences. Um, easiest, uh, the easiest way is to do with waste dump is just define on your whole road network, network this is a waste dump and it takes this type of waste and then trucks will just go there dump at that point and then go back to the mine <coughs> uh, another thing you can do is you can specify waste dump fill sequence which these are just voids blocks empty blocks and so if you specify one of them the simulation will take the truck to the, the, the waste dump entry and then do a straight line from that point down to the centroid of the waste dump fill block, the next one to be filled. And so the trucks travel backwards and forwards between there. And the best, the normal, the other way of doing it is actually specifying the finger roads as part of your whole road network on the waste dumps. And therefore the simulation will use those finger roads to work out how to get from the waste dump entry to the next waste dump fill block. So it's, it gives a more realistic cycle time for waste dumps as the waste dump fills up over, over the, you know, the simulation period. Uh, you specify your conveyors, that's the start and end point of your conveyor, the rate, the simulation knows the length, you specify the rate and you specify whether it's available speed conveyor and things like that. <coughs> and you specify transfer chutes, these are usually just you know, between conveyors. You usually only specify transfer chutes if you're having issues with them and you want to introduce a breakdown regime to your shoots. Um, so you want to look at if you improve the shoots, what impact that has on your on your process. Um, once, uh, one thing, all these sorts of things, you can just, like conveyors, you have a conveyor, then you say this conveyor now feeds a stockpile, it may feed a transfer chute or it may feed a bin or something. So you can link all these things together different ways if you want to without you know it's quite easy to set up a whole different fixed plant structure for the mine if you want to it only takes like 10 minutes to move everything around and come up with a new structure or process um, bins uh, once again they're just bins that you fill up and then empty out um, uh, in the bins you can also have way bins which you know feed onto all passes and all sorry hoisting shafts other types of bins you can have distribution bins which you just feed in then you know, it's just distributed if you want to different conveyor systems or what have you uh, specify your oil processing plants uh, whether it's a washing plant or whatever it is um, and you also can specify here how <coughs> what attribute of your mine face material you want to use to work out whether you've got wash product or rejects or oversized, undersized product, how the, the process plan is going to you know, generate what you want. And then then in here you can specify, well, my rejects go here under this conveyor and my product goes under this conveyor, etc, etc. <coughs> you can specify ore passes for underground mines, hoisting shafts, and also nominate which levels they're working to and stuff like that. Uh, specify stockpiles. You can specify product stockpiles, one of mine stockpiles, uh, leaching stockpiles, uh, crude oil dumps, etc., etc. And also, there's lots of attributes about stockpiles. Like a uh, run of mine stockpile, you can specify when this stockpile is reclaimed. Like you can say, I want to reclaim from this stockpile when I'm mining the same sort of material in the stockpile, but the rate of material out of the mine is fallen below 4,000 tons per hour. Therefore, I'll start up run of mine reclaim from this stockpile um, and there's a whole pile of different ways you can trigger off run of mine reclaim from a um, 
when I'm on stop pile. Um, you can specify stop pile grey targets. These are usually applied to product stop piles um, that you're trying to put on grey, depending on how you're stacking and reclaiming. Um, you, there's, there's functionality within TMS to say, well, if this grade of material on this product stop pile is such and such, and I expect from the mine the grade is going to be this, and if I put it on that stop pile, that stop pile is going to go way out of grade, therefore I'll put it onto this other stop pile to bring that stop pile into grade. You can, that's just, simulation will do that, it'll move the, the stackers around to, to try and achieve that. And some mines like to investigate as a possibility. You can set up your rails for your stack and reclaimers. So you, you can actually set your stack and reclaim on the same rails if you want and try and get it to work. Um, <laughs> you can, your stockpile stackers and reclaimers, you can specify them and what material, what, st what stockpiles they use. You can specify your stackers, whether you're doing cone stacking or chevron stacking or whatever it may be. Um, and you can do controls on your stacker reclaimers. These are things about how fast they move when they're stacking or reclaiming, how fast they move when they're not, uh, where they park up. If, you know, if they're on the same rails, you may want to park them up somewhere when you want the other machine to get access to a part of the stop hole. And you also you can set up distance buffers between these, even if they're working on different rails, you may still want to set up a buffer that they don't work close to each other. Um, you can set up your switching or flop gates, depending on where you come from. So, and the simulation will set up, you've got controls there of when <coughs> material is sent to this conveyor or the flop gate switches over to send the material to a different conveyor or what have you. All those sorts of controls are in this fixed plant logic and also in these operating modes. The operating modes is a really rich uh, functionality, especially process control logic. Um, the very flexible process control logic. So you can control, it's used a lot in some uh, coal mines and stuff too, because they've got so many different types of material, coal types, and they all go in different places and stuff. So th this in this sort of, you can set up how you want to run what is important to you, that <clears throat> when I'm running this type of coal, it's going to go here. Um, yeah, it's going to have to go through the wash plant or it can go to a domestic stockpile or whatever it is or this type of coal actually we don't have to wash we just send it straight to the product stockpile and yeah, for ready for railing or something and it's all those sorts of different operating modes that the, the mine may operate with changes over over time access delays that's just mainly to stockpiles and stuff saying you know you run a mine stockpile and you just can't access it during the uh, wet season for a certain amount of time or whatever it is. So it's just access to lace to stop poles and stuff. Uh, railways, this is one section in TMS that has not been developed fully. Uh, just hasn't had just haven't had the opportunity to simulate a lot of railways or big railways. Um, simulated a number of smaller operations, but nothing major. So Virtually it's just the same as like Hall Road, you set up your rail network as nodes and segments and each rail segment you specify, you know, one way, two way or whatever it is, uh, maybe one way, um, one, tr one track type thing and you, you know, where you have passing bays and all that sort of stuff. You set up your locomotives, um, yeah, how many locomotives you have on the train, you set up the trains which is like the you specify which locomotives are on the train. There's also the number of wagons and how big the wagons are and all that sort of stuff. And you can set up delays. You know, it's just things that simulation can't generate for the train, for they may be. And you set up where your load stations are and how they operate and your dump stations and how they operate. And then you can set up your yes, train station delays if you want. Um, so this... And you can set up, uh, you, know, you can keep the locomotives att attached to the rake of wagons or in some mines they detach the the, wag the, the locomotive and, attach, and take it over and attach to a, another rake of, and use it that way. And they have um, systems that pull the wagon, the rake through the, the lo train loader or dump station or what have you. So that's one area that does need, I think, needs further development um, when the opportunity arises. Uh, ports and ships being applied to quite a, this is really well defined. 
Um, <clears throat> there's some general information uh, about ports and ships, you know, separation of ships and stuff like that. You can specify the tides. This is just, you know, time, but time where you have low, low and high tides, and the simulation puts a, a sine curve through it to work out tide height in between the high and low tides. It also has the functionality you calculate. You may give it the tide at the at the mouth of the river, and the simulation has the ability to calculate when when it's high tide at the mouth, when it actually is high tide somewhere up the river, and also what the height of that tide will be up the river. So it's mainly used when you're using barging operations down river. The simulation knows the the height of water all the time along the whole length of the river which has been caused by tidal influences well and to the point where it you know tides don't influence the you know when you're further up the river um once again like the uh rail and the my um haul roads you can specify the shipping channels as um strings and the simulation will manipulate them into a set of shipping buoys or places along the shipping channels and actual shipping channels once again these are just points along where ships travel as such and once again you can specify that you know ships only travel one direction in the shipping channel or whatever it may be um, some ports like Glaston they have a, an entrance channel where you can only have one ship in there at any one particular time so that's where you can set up those sorts of restrictions you can specify ports uh, you have quite you have up to five or six ports and your best attributes about some ports you know, only operate during the day some ports don't operate when the wind is above a certain strength and all this sort of stuff so that's what you specify there you can specify port operating times some ports you know they don't operate christmas day new year's day or some holidays some ports don't only operate six days a week they don't operate on sunday you can set up delays these are just general delays in the port um, due to um, whatever um, but they're quite specific to that particular port uh, you can set up water currents uh, the simulation will calculate water currents and tides if you want where you can actually water currents can, can be quite specific to the actual port and where it is along the coast and coastal influences <coughs> and then yeah you can the simulation can use water currents to say well if the water current is greater than six knots I'm gonna instead of using three tugs I'm going to have to bring in a third tug to pull the vessel off the berth, a cape vessel off the berth, or something like that. You can uh, input, you can specify wave heights. That's it. Some mines or some operations, you know, they stop loading ships if the wave height is above two meters or something. Uh, you can specify siltation, siltation rates. So that's that. The channels over time slightly fill up with siltation, therefore reducing the amount of underkill clearance. For the vessels and then you know, up to a stage where you do uh, preventative uh, dredging to return the channel depth to the normal depth um, once again you apply plan maintenance schedules and breakdowns to all the components involved in ship loading or discharging and you can set up once again all your, your fixed plant locations and your stockpiles associated with shipping um, you can specify your ship loads discharges so things like yeah you can set them up such that you can specify a gross load rate for a ship loader for a particular ship for a particular type of material or you can specify a net load rate and then apply all the breakdowns to the loading system such that it varies depends on what information you have and what you're using the simulation for you can set your wharves up these are generally just the length of wharf to restrict you know, two large ships at two berths at the same time or something and you can set up then you set up your berths and you can set up your berths as you know this is a berth just for mooring tugs or a berth for unloading loading bulk site vessels and or whatever it may be and or well, this is a type of berth that is only used for mooring push-pull boats in a barging operation or whatever it may be um, so you just set up your berths on your wharves, whatever they may be. Um, don't worry about that. Updating ships just updates all your ships that you have as specification files, so that you can see them in the simulation. 
you can set up different reporting groups on your ships. So <clears throat> you may want to report all your cape size vessels, or you may just want to report all your vessels that load a specific type of material. So you can set up your reporting groups. You can set up ship delays, uh, which occur wherever. Uh, there's different ways you can specify ship delays. And then you can, at the moment, set up to five different fleets of vessels. And within them, you can set up subfleets of vessels, up to five different subfleets within the five fleets. Um, the simulation works, the logic in the simulation as far as ships go is that um, each fleet of ship is, is usually assigned to a customer uh, or a, if you're importing stuff to a supplier. The reason being is that the supplier or the customer generally wants to keep their stocks to a certain level and so they generally want you know, consistent shipping between the two with amount of you know, flexibility, amount of variation and stuff. So that's how this, the fleets are set up, mainly based on customer or supplier. And it's being verified at a number of ports. So the way the simulation is generating ship arrivals using that sort of logic is very extremely close to actual, really virtually spot on. So that's it's a really good way of specifying ships and so then as you increase the fleet size you can see the congestion adding up if need depending on the port and all the rest of it but, but it does generate the same sort of ship arrival pattern as actuals and you can change the ship fleet rates based on time um, you know like winter months you may have less number of ships for a particular product and more during the summer months or whatever it may be so the rate will change um, you can set up a ship schedule. These are for, for ports that have um, passenger ships or other types of ships that arrive on a regular schedule. So you can have them in the simulation. Um, existing vessels, that's a list of every ship or every bulk material, bulk handling ship out on the ocean and also being built, currently being built. Um, you can access this when you specify a fleet of ships. You can actually specify, I'm going to use Panamax vessels, and these are the, the quality uh, specifications on those vessels I'm going to use. Or you can say, I'm going to use Panamax vessels from this size to this size, but use existing vessels. So the simulation will actually go over here and pick out when it wants a Panamax vessel to turn up, it'll come over and actually pick up an existing vessel and apply the specifications of that vessel as it passes through this particular port. And in this existing vessel, you can actually, even though it's got all the ships, you can you know, say yes or no, that they actually be used in the simulation or not. Then you've got other vessels. They are just other vessels that may be using your port on an irregular basis, not on a scheduled basis. Uh, and you can specify river barges, how big the barges are, whether they work independently or you know you want them to join up in like six barges together and all this sort of stuff and then you got your push pull boats how they attach to the barges um, in the cases where the river barges are self-propelled the simulation just attaches a push pull boat to it permanently to generate a self-propelled barge and you have transloaders you can have transloaders in in the middle of a river if you want some operations use smaller barges that and then they come down part way down the river. When the river gets bigger, they transload from the smaller barges into ocean going barges. And then they go out to another transloader which may load export ships. So you can specify your transloaders. Uh, pilot boats, well, just where and how many pilot boats you have and where they attach to the ships to bring them in and for departure. And tugs, how many tugs you have, and also their, their pulling power and all that sort of stuff to say you know we need three of them on this type of ship or two on this type of ship to berth it or bring it off the berth you know how long the ships you know that when you pull use two tugs to pull the vessel off the berth and then only one tug stays with it as it goes out the out the at the berth, uh, port or some operations they demand that you know the both tugs stay with them or something whatever it is you can look at that sort of stuff and this report travel times this is that you can specify from this point from this point in my port to this point I want to report you know, shipping uh, movements and stuff.
and then this is uh, all the reports all the standard reports I'd say that generated by TMS it's just if you turn them on if you want to the KPI is one of the more important ones that has for each piece of mobile equipment it, it reports uh, activity base you know how long it's spending loading how many times it got loaded the average time it took to load how much time it spent waiting at the loader or whatever it may be how much time it spent in for major maintenance how much time it spent for regular maintenance how much time it spent breakdowns um, it's tkph uh, how many tons it carried of this type of ore and how many tons it carried of waste or whatever it may be all those sorts of high level kpis it also has all the information about the ships what how long the ships are waiting at fairway beacons and all that sort of stuff if you include a port it also has all the information for your fixed plant how many tons went through on a conveyor you know loaded and offloaded and how how often was it operating how much plant mate was applied how many times how much time it was broken down and all this sort of information then there's an operational trace that's virtually for each piece of fixed plant you can say well how many tons went through on an hour by hour basis or you can do how many tons went through on a shift basis or whatever it is um, tonnage by iteration that's so uh, if you run one year or six months of it you run it 20 times it reports on how much production was through each conveyor or ship load or whatever for each iteration so you can see the variation in for each iteration though the simulation is running the same year you'll see the simulation generates that variation and you can see whether how often you're actually meeting target you may be meeting target 90% of the time or you may be only meeting it 10% of the time and you can use this to figure out why you're not doing it this is just a trace of how many tons you got on your mine faces um, the simulation tracks mine face tonnages so naturally um, these are just traces on your diggers in your truck so you can say every hour just tell me where the digger is what it, its location what it's working on its status and all that how many tons it's dug in the last hour or whatever it is same with trucks this is just in whole road usage how much it's used each section of roads and you've got interactions and congestion analysis reports um, operating modes you know each of the operating modes, how often they were used how many tons went through for this type of operating mode traffic density reports and then a whole pile of other reports um, shipping log is a log of every ship how long it spent at the fairway big and how long it took to come into port how long it was waiting to get loaded how long the loading rate material loaded how many tons were loaded on it what its underkill clearance was when it left how much how long it was delayed for it was allowed to leave and all this lots lots of stuff same with the uh, mobile equipment for every truck cycle you can generate the sort of information on the 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 mobile like the truck when he's traveling from a to b or it'll, it'll, it'll actually tell you um you know i was traveling during that cycle i wasted five you know one minute because i you know caught up to a truck in front an overloaded truck in front of me delayed me by a minute because i had to slow down to maintain my whole road separation distance between between equipment so it reports on all that sort of information so you can see what's going on and stuff so this is more just kind of a snippet of like this is ship fleet one so you can see you can have multiple um, fleets you can specify this is how you do it you just click on something it has a pull down menu you can select a different ship the same for the trucks will come down with types of trucks you've got and then you can specify all the information how you, you know where you want a particular ship where you want the pilot to board when you want the tugs to attach how long it takes to tug how many tugs you want all this sort of stuff this goes down quite deep how you specify information about your shipping as such so that is generally an overview a very quick overview of just some of the things in the input output spreadsheet for TMS now we'll just go on to the animation displays um, this is actually TMS in arena see in front of you is the main menu for the mine simulator engine which has been developed in arena this is a display of the animation which is automatically generated through whatever's in your input spreadsheet as you can see in this particular animation it's a this is actually a coal mine which has two processing plants 
and a lot of these dark points here are just dump points and there's a whole pile of low points one thing i like to make clear at this stage is that if if a truck has to travel from here around to here the simulation automatically generates the best path or the best route for the truck to take to get from point a to point b um, these are not specified in the input spreadsheet the simulation automatically generates that and that pathway may change depending on different attributes you may set up the pathway you may the truck may go this way if there's a lot of congestion around this point if that's what you ask it to do etc the other interesting thing in tms when it has a, a truck has to like travel from here around to here you will actually pre-process it before the truck actually starts off you will actually say how where am i going to have to stop you know there's a stop sign here the simulation won't accelerate the truck up to a certain speed and then all of a sudden when it gets here it's the, tr the truck stops the simulation will tr accelerate the truck up to a certain speed whichever x possible speed it can do and it'll know it's got to stop here so if somewhere else further back it actually starts applying the acceleration to the truck so the truck slows down as normal to that particular point the simulation also has all the uh, haul road um, rules in there so a truck coming up to here he may actually slow down and stop because there's other trucks traveling through that intersection or he may he may come to there and he may slow down and virtually stop because he can see a truck coming up here and he's not sure which way that truck is actually going to turn so um, in that case there may be a stop sign here there may be a give way sign or something like that which help control those trucks if there is no stop signs or whatever uh, tms applies just common sense logic and the truck will actually come up here and if, if there was no stop or give way sign the truck would come up and virtually slow down to a stop because you can see a truck came up here and once that truck turns around and goes down there then he'll take off when it's all clear to do so so all those sorts of logic is already built into tms so in this display with all the as you can see it will display haul roads railways and shipping and all the other different locations that may show up this is a more zoomed in view so here you can just see some trucks traveling around the different colored trucks they may be different attributes they may be different model trucks or what have you so these are all the waste dumps once again in tms you can nominate um, how if a load if a truck gets loaded somewhere and it's carrying waste which actual waste dumps is it is it sent to as such you can specify different ways of specifying waste dumps based on distance that you know some of the trucks may go to a close waste dump and might what some trucks may go to a truck a waste dump further away to spread the waste dump around the waste around so here you can see like a truck maybe tipping into a tip bay and this is you know goes down to these raw stockpiles in this case and then gets through a coal prep plant and into um, product stockpiles and you've got the rejects and so you've got the rejects trucks once again the simulation that how you do the rejects is up to you you can specify a particular truck or trucks that just are dedicated to taking the rejects down to a particular waste dump or waste dump area or you can just say you know whenever the waste the bin gets to a certain level assign the next truck that dumps or the closest empty truck to go and pick up the rejects try and dispatch the trucks to pick up rejects once again that's all specified in the input output spreadsheet so this is just a, a view of uh, truck display so you can just go up and down all the trucks in your fleet and look at what they're doing so this is when the simulation is running this is continually being updated so that for some of the information the, the identification of the truck what type of truck it is its normal payload which digger it's been assigned to and it's this current distance to wherever it's going to dump so this truck's loaded so he's, he's about 1.6 kilometers away from his dump and the operator skill level here is one so this is where he's currently location on the haul road and this is where his destination is he's going to this particular dump and right now when this when i took a picture of this screen the truck was doing 13 13 kilometers per hour in second gear and he's tra he's actually loaded with 150 tons of overburden considering his payload's 180 obviously the density of this material is kind of a bit lighter than coal or something so he's only be able to fit 150 tons in there based on the volume of his tray so the simulation knows the volume of the tray knows the 
payload he knows the density of the material at the mine face and all this so he kind of works out what tons go into that particular truck based on all the common sense restrictions to tell you how many tons can be put in that truck and normally in this particular simulation there's all these because it's a coal mine there's all these ash contents and stuff because we're mining uh what are we mining waste or overburden uh, that in this particular mine we don't have you know these sorts of coal qualities so at this particular time this is pretty early on in the simulation he's done three loads per shift this is his dkph etc also this is the simulations tracking smu hours on each piece of equipment and he also has the maintenance so he knows when he's going in for maintenance and how long it's going to go for but once again it's common sense logic and once he's dumped his load if his maintenance due he gets on the radio and sees there's actually room in the maintenance bay for him if there isn't he continues going on his doing his circuit um, and he it logs a an exception and then you, after the simulation you can look at the ex exceptions and if you get a lot of exceptions to do with you know can't get into maintenance bay well you may consider putting another maintenance bay into the simulation uh, once again next service uh, refueling um, 24 hours um, how long it's going to take when it gets close to the buy his uh, breakdowns when his next breakdown how long it's going to be um, this one's not because uh, it's early on hasn't been assigned a breakdown yet um, this is his current fuel tank level how, how full it is and his current consumption based on this payload and speed etc once again you can bring in in trucks for servicing based on every 24 hours or whatever it may be or you can use fuel tank levels and once it gets down to a certain level the truck goes into the service bay to refuel if he can't get in there he may remain on circuit and then there's an emergency fuel tank level so it's a, if he gets down to that level and there's no room for him at the service bay he'll go and queue at the service bay and once again that generates an exception and then you can look at the exceptions and say maybe you know too many trucks are waiting um, to get into the service maybe we need another service bay in that particular area uh, this is one for the diggers once again similar sorts of equip uh, information about the diggers but slightly different um, so this is a Atashi EX3600 it's a 23 meter capacity bucket where it's current location his destination same thing so he's reached his, his uh, destination um, so he's been he's got a max trucks of six and there's six trucks available he's been assigned six trucks at this particular time um, and his distance to dump on average is one, one a bit over a kilometre but he's been assigned eight dumps so when a truck gets low they may go to either these, these eight truck each, each any of these eight dumps depending on what logic you've set up in the input spreadsheet about how you want to handle waste and dumps so he's mining partings the current block he's working has got roughly 50,000 tonnes once again there's no grade associated with it um, right now he's running he's got his ignition on he's loading a truck he's got two trucks in his queue every time to load a truck another load per shift he's doing remember this is early on and there's actually four diggers in partings at this particular time and once again the on the loaders or digging units you're yeah, monitoring SMU hours and when they're due for maintenance and all this sort of stuff as well as when they're due in service and breakdowns and operational delays and stuff so this is just a quick view of uh, fixed plant so here you can just scroll up and down all your fixed plants in this case you um, run the mine stockpiles your processing plants and all your conveyors and stuff so that's just a general what's going into your plant um, tons per hour what the current level is and then coming out of it as such um, oh that's actually a truck dump so this is several truck dumps here so we've got seven twenty hundred going in for whatever the level's at and fourteen hundred coming out um, so that's and then it goes on to this conveyor I think it is that feeds onto that conveyor um, this down here is the same sort of information but more detailed so this is uh, fixed plant number 27 which is a conveyor and on this conveyor being fed onto this conveyor or the average grade of material on this conveyor right now is there's 50 percent north yield or the 50 percent yield of this ash etc the qualities of the we've decided to track through the simulation and it's 
on this conveyor it's 1400 tons per hour going off there's currently 102 tons on the conveyor and it's 1400 tons coming off so as you can see the, the, the level and the capacity is the same so the, the conveyor is full it's carrying coal and this is the speed of the conveyor and the length and therefore the material is on this for 4.4 minutes and the material uh, conveyor is running as such so that's the end of the uh, video on a high level view of the uh, TMS input output spreadsheet as well as the TMS engine. Um, please, if you've got further interest, please look at the other videos which will go down to a lot more detail about TMS, its input and the simulation engine. Okay, thank you.